Okay, guys, uh, we're starting here. My name is Maximo Trinidad, and we're going to be talking about what's cooking with PowerShell Core. Uh, I don't know how many of you have given it a shot, and I know that many people have been restraining a little bit to uh, uh, to use it. Uh, let's put it this way. It's not a matter of how can I apply this in my current job or, or task, but it's just about that now that it's general avail available now, uh, you should at least play with it. You already know, if you're ready with working with PowerShell, uh, that's the easy part. Uh, the rest is just a matter of what this bring in for the future. What is bringing in as you, as a window administrator, uh, end up being managing also Linux or Macintoshes at an automation level. Okay, just keep that in mind. Be very open-minded on this. So my name is Maximo Trinidad. I'm the technology evangelist for Sapien Technologies. And also I've been a PowerShell MVP for nine years. Uh, I was one of the first 30 first PowerShell MVPs by that time. Uh, I'm very reachable. You can uh, either uh, connect with me uh, right via email or Twitter and, uh, and, and you can ask questions. Feel free to reach out, okay? So this is our agenda, which I've changed a little bit at, at the end. I added uh, a PowerShell versus uh, PowerShell core topic in there. So don't don't be discouraged by this. But we have to know our environment, okay? And this is basically what we're going to be covered during this session here. Um, it's at the time of the demo, it's going to be a little more open. And so I'm, I'm going to go through the slides as, uh, as much as I can here because I didn't realize there's, there's material here, but this is just for you to understand what involved in your kitchen, in your, in, your, in your admin kitchen, right? I mean, you have your tools, you have your desk, you have your material, how you put it together in order to make your automation successful, okay? And we're not talking your infrastructure, we're talking about hybrid technology, cloud, on-premise, everything, okay? But basically, this is what we're going to be covering here. So, at uh, the desktop platform environment, uh, it's I would recommend, and if you can, if you're Windows 10, it's always good to be a build 16299 or greater. I think right now it will be called the Spring Edition, if I'm not mistaken. Um, of course, a high-end desktop will work great. Uh, I, I have experience issue with Hyper-V in the beginning. Uh, so right now I'm using more VMware and even VirtualBox works alongside VMware, which is strange, but hey, it does work. So you can have diff diff different technology there. Of course, if you use Hyper-V, it's either Hyper-V or VMware or VirtualBox. Uh, now, one thing that comes with this uh, build on 16299 is the RTM on Windows Subsystem for Linux. This is available from the Microsoft Store, and you have different type of distros. You know, you got Ubuntu, SUSE. Uh, Red Hat hasn't been implemented yet in there, but uh, I think you're also on Ubuntu server available. I only have the uh, the, uh, the basic one, the, the Ubuntu. Okay, uh, you can uh, when you download it, follow the instructions on, on the requirement uh, on, that is explained on the uh, Microsoft uh, Store, and also you can you have to first turn on the uh, on the Windows feature. The, um, to the checkbox for the um, Windows subsystem for Linux. Very important, this is cloud solution in Azure, Amazon, although we're not cover Am um, uh, Amazon, but it's very important to distinguish that now that on the cloud we also have the PowerShell prompt, the PowerShell shell brought from the browser. And you can also use either the Windows PowerShell in that uh, cloud browser or you can use the PowerShell core. It is available. You just have to type PWSH, okay? All right, so now in the editor side, uh, I, I, I have to, I'm, I'm sorry, but I always say I never, ever since ISC came out, I never like it. Uh, it is not because I'm a sapient evangelist. 
I've been using Sapien uh, products since 1997, since uh, Primal Script was the first uh, editor that came up with multi-language uh, purpose. Uh, Visual Studio Code, excellent. I will use that that I will use that editor rather than than the ISC. If I if a lot of extensibility, a lot of feature they can add on multi-language, but then again, it's a lightweight. Uh, when you set up, you gotta make sure you configure the JSON configuration for each of the language that you have. So that makes it a little bit cumbersome, and there's a learning learning curve. But it's a good startup. Again, it's a light editor. It's a good startup to use. And then we have all the other cross-platforms uh, uh, editors like Vim and Emacs, which uh, uh, eventually, if you're in a desktop console only, then you can use those to um, create your script. Although we'll not have the functionality of building IntelliSense and, and, and all that, that nice feature that VS Code provide now as Windows, Macintosh, and, and Linux. Now, as an enterprise editor, you know, those are the ones that you pay for. Uh, then you have Visual Studio, where you can add the uh, partial extension on it. But still have some, some limitation. It's still growing. But then now we end up with the Sapien problem, which has been there for a long time. And everything is on their option. You can click and choose what you want to do in the features. Uh, it's very, it's everything. It's a rapid development tool for PowerShell. Okay, everything is there. It doesn't limit you to use other tools, meaning if you can switch to VS Code and back to PowerShell Studio or ISC and back to PowerShell Studio, you can use it. As a matter of fact, it's a tool. It's one more tool you can use. Some are productive, some are efficient, and you can combine all those in your environment. So, because I'm sapiens, I gotta put that uh, plugin in here. Uh, one of the f few features that I can tell you is benefit you if I have wizards. So you can create, uh, uh, this is a tool that creates windows, but not only windows, it's scripting, module, functions, uh, you can snippets. Uh, in the area of custom tools, you can add all those little uh, uh, features that instead of going out and, and look for it, you can add it to this pull down menu so you can run. I'll show you that on, uh, on, on my demo. You have a cache editor. Uh, which means it shows everything that is cached on, on your on your modules is cached the same way as the console does, but you can view it, so you can drill down to it. That comes down to the object browser, okay? You can debug the script. And one thing that we added in recently in this, uh, this year release from PowerShell Studio uh, 2018 is the ability to at least have the console for the uh, PowerShell core. Uh, it's not fully implemented. What I'm trying to say is, in uh, if you have ever seen PowerShell Studio, uh, you have to pick version 2 or version 5. Version 6 is not there available, but you can highlight the code and go under the console area and pick PowerShell Core to run it. Uh, you cannot run it the whole thing because it will think it is PowerShell 5. So along, you know, this year, hopefully, we will have a full implementation, but at least it won't stop you for testing your uh, PowerShell core scripts. Now, of course, all the languages. We have PowerShell core installed, Anaconda. Anaconda, I bring this one up because you, without knowing, with having this set up in your system, you started to become a DevOps, okay? It's not limit. It's not limiting you to one single purpose of creating script. You got to understand all the languages if you want to move along different platforms in in, in your in your uh, infrastructure. Okay, uh, I'm bringing up Anaconda because this package gives you everything at once to load. You don't have to go outside and keep adding stuff. Uh, uh, on, on demand because you miss something, you have to go back with the PIP to install the package of Python for graphic or PIP for math, and you know, so this has everything you need to work with Python and is the latest version of 3.6. It comes an older version too, but I would suggest if you want to practice study, use the, the Anaconda full download. And of course, now that we have, as everybody knows, I hope that SQL Server Developer Edition is free to download. 
you cannot use it in production, but for your education and understanding of SQL Server, it's free, okay? It can be installed in Windows, it can be installed in Linux. I love Linux because it can be installed in two minutes. That's it, two minutes. The engine can install, you can start using it. And then you can install, uh, you can install the, the, other, the other components like uh, SQL Agent and Full Text. Um, I mean, all the instructions are available, okay? Now we have in the connectivity side, Open SSH. Open SSH is very important because that's the main communication between Linux system that's been known for so many years. Of course, if you want to still use WinRM, you can use it, but let me tell you, it's complex. It's not an easy setup. And I, I love that. I like, I like simplicity. And because SSH is very well known, I stick to SSH in this scenario. Now, thing that I'm that I when I was talking about languages, right? Uh, you becoming a DevOps, you're not limited to DOS, you're not limited to to Bash. Uh, there are important languages that's been for a long time cross-platform, and this is a list of them. Okay, C Sharp. Look at that. It's cross-platform. Why? Because it, it was Mono came up with with C Sharp cross-platform, and now it's .NET Core. Uh, C, uh, Ruby, right? Uh, C Object C. Uh, PowerShell, <laughs> okay, it's funny, right? <clears throat> Excuse me for my for, for my voice. I've been suffering a little bit, but uh, yeah, it went a notch up for for uh, for the first quarter of this year. It's gaining some popularity because remember, PowerShell is not here to replace any other language for automation. It's not. It's going to replace Python. It's not going to replace Ruby or PHP, but it's just another tool for automation. And remember, this is now we got .NET in Linux. If you know how to use it .NET in Windows, you can use it in Linux, object oriented. Bring the, do the get on those command lists and bring that information out cross platform. Okay, and I'm gonna show you an example of, of that in a form that I created. Ah, I don't know if you check my blog, but I figured out a way to use Windows form and run my PowerShell core command lit. Very simple. It's nothing to it, but I'll show you the trick. Okay, but it's very important. You can do it. All right. So here we have Windows 10 builds uh, 162.99 or Insider Edition or greater. Uh, the WSL, the Windows Subsystem for Linux, is it the Ubuntu? This is an example. One is the console here. This console, you know very well, or I know very well, I have heard many times. Linux admin hates GUI. So that's why they started bringing only the console. Now, what happened here is I've been doing this for two years now. I'm able to install the Ubuntu desktop packages, which bring me the ability to also in my Windows 10 have the X Windows server with my Ubuntu desktop open. And that way I can test if I want to, to develop graphic interaction between Python and Windows in my Ubuntu and do cross-platform graphic if I want to, okay? This is very important. Do, do you, you don't limit yourself to what is in front of you. You go ahead and expand and go ahead and practice. You learn and you, will su and you succeed. All right, so this is the most important part of what's cooking with PowerShell, all right? Uh, I provided some links in the in my resource page, uh, which is very informative, especially the one with Jeffrey Snover to talk about this. And basically, you got to understand Windows PowerShell is Microsoft trademark. Okay, so we can hack into it. We we there's certain things they're working on it, and we can talk about it as as as, as MVP. Those are what they call NDA level, non disclosure agreement. All right. So now we got PowerShell Core. It's open source. It's community based. The community helped uh, fine tune this product to the point of what it is now. Now we are in preview. Okay, preview.1. That's amazing. It, it version right now is uh, PowerShell 6.1.0 preview.1. And that's all the changes since the first it came available it was 6.00 in January. I mean, this is amazing the way we're speeding up the, the, the thing with uh, PowerShell Core. 
supporting differences, right? Well, Windows PowerShell only works in Windows OSs. That's it. PowerShell Core will work in Windows, Linux distros, and Macintosh OS. On the feedback for reporting and giving feedbacks and reporting issues, Windows PowerShell used user voice form only, okay? I've seen a lot of people trying to sneak in Windows issues in GitHub. It won't get help in there. It only meant for PowerShell Core, and and they will not resubmit those issues to user voice. You got to submit them to user voice. So you make sure you, you understand that, okay? It is in the landing page, okay? The landing page of PowerShell Core explain Windows PowerShell versus PowerShell Core and how to report things. Now, what is the current status of, of PowerShell? Jeffrey Snowden said, Windows PowerShell is complete. So it might be a freeze on 1.1. We don't know it might be 1.1.1, uh, I mean 5.1.x, whatever. We don't know that, but it's complete because the whole intention is Windows PowerShell is complete in a standpoint for the manifesto. We accomplished the goal. Now, the next generation is what involves PowerShell Core, which means for cross-platform. Okay, it will not replace Windows PowerShell, but Windows PowerShell will stay there for a long time because because you know it's been across many uh, Windows servers uh, application, so it is, it's impossible. Uh, so it's going to take. I don't. It's not going to replace. It's take us a long time to to do that effort. It's a strong effort. Okay, uh, so the best thing is both. Okay. Don't be afraid to use both because you, you can, uh, as going to show you in, in a demo soon, you can, you know, cross platform, run the script on one side, bring maybe some information from that side to Windows and do your magic with it. Okay. So start using PowerShell Core. Now, on a PowerShell Core installation, it's well documented in GitHub. Follow instruction, you will get it installed. Uh, as mentioned before, read the PowerShell core landing page, which is the main page for to, to, to get it. And then you scroll down and you, and you check the platform installation side. You have all the different platforms in there uh, you can install it to. So it's very easy to install. Now, one of the good things about uh, PowerShell core and Windows PowerShell is that we have access to the gallery, the PowerShell gallery, also in Nugget, okay? That goes side by side. Uh, this is just a brief uh, uh, introduction to, to let you know where are the modules at, okay? And uh, in PowerShell Core for now, uh, if you look at the uh, at the third item here, PowerShell Core only PS Core modules. Those are the standard PS. That one makes PowerShell Core works. Those modules will be in this folder here, okay? Oh, sorry, in this folder here on their PowerShell. The version and modules folder. All other modules are stored uh, in in the one above. It's a PowerShell and then module. So they they, they distinguish. You know, uh, if you download and from PowerShell gallery or Nugget the modules, then it's going to be in a separate folders. All right. Uh, and then on the case of downloading from the um, Nugget uh, packaging system, uh, both PowerShell Core and Windows share the same folder. Uh, the pointer is because publish, uh, the, the packages already know if it's for .NET Core or it is for um, Windows only. So the distinction is already embedded within their DLLs. Sorry guys, I'm losing my voice a little bit. Let me drink some water here. All right, so now there are specialist packages, okay? I call the specialist packages because this is one thing that helped me build my, my, my desktop here. Um, and it's just uh, chocolate tape package management. Um, this is only Windows based. Uh, and in this case, I'm pointing out to the one that I used to install my X Windows server for, so I can use WSL in, in the, uh, with Ubuntu uh, desktop. And then of course, uh, there's a latest version already released in OpenSSH. And you can easily download it from from the uh, uh, from this uh, package management site, okay, and I gave you the instruction on how to do that. 
first you have to install it, follow instruction from the uh, from the install link, and, and then you can write the command to install it even info. You can do Choco info to check the package information, so you can read it, and then decide if you want to install it or not. Okay. And this is just an example of how it's going to look like when you have it installed in your system. Uh, here's from the uh, uh, the uh, Windows X server and the uh, Open SSH. Uh, so it give you an, an idea. And this is only for um, uh, you can install and use the Windows Publisher too. I just because I, I did it everything from my from my uh, uh, how do you call it from my uh, PowerShell core session here. So it doesn't matter. You install it from from Windows, uh, PowerShell, or but this is just these are Windows packages, okay? So now, beside that, uh, on Nugget, one thing to understand is uh, Nuggets provide you with both Windows packages and .NET Core .NET Core packages, and um, you gotta make sure you understand that that distinction. Uh, search for it, read information. Uh, you can do a, a find and install. You can do a find and install package command to uh, to uh, to proceed. And I give you an example here. Um, I work with the uh, SMO DLL, so I can run it on both uh, my Ubuntu and my uh, Windows side on PowerShell Core, and, um, and this works great. I mean, that way you can create one SMO script from one location and then use it in multiple places. Uh, with with no issues at all, so this is an example of that. What does it come down to? This is going to be your cross-platform ecosystem. Okay, this is what you're going to end up being. Admin to DevOps, uh, you start handling your stuff on your on-premise area. Doesn't matter. Windows and PowerShell Core. You use the best solution for your product, and there are things that they can identify, uh, which I'm going to show you in my examples. That you can identify. Oh, if this is uh, a cross-platform script, then you can add this little easy uh, condition steps to identify. Oh, I can run this here or it's not. Okay, and everything's come down to on-premise, hybrid, cloud solution, Azure, Docker. Everything is cross-platform. And um, it's up to you to, you know, jump and do your due diligence and and make things work. Education is there, man. It's up for you to crap. And now, ooh, now we're gonna brief for the demo here. All right. Uh, before I start the demo, I'm gonna make sure that I have some resource links. I'm gonna provide James with this uh, presentation. Uh, some important links there. Yes, a lot of reading in here, but. Um, let me tell you, this is, uh, I documented everything I can on my website, uh, including the latest OpenSSH installation, which I know there's another version that just came out. So I'll be always updating that and, and creating new new blog posts for that. Um, and then my contact information. So let me put this aside and let's see some demos. Do you have any questions for now before I begin? No, nothing here. All right. So here we go. My editor is PowerShell Studio. I've been using it for a long time. And and uh, and I do use Visual Studio Code from time to time. One of the features that I explained before, custom tools, here's where I can add some things that I do outside that I used to run outside of uh, PowerShell Studio. I could run it from here. See here, I can do Ubuntu PS Core or write Ubuntu only. Even I can open Anaconda Spider. Oh, I forgot to mention Anaconda Spider uh, brings its own Python uh, editor, which is pretty good. So uh, this this is a uh, it's very interesting. So you can use your tools, whatever you want. You have the uh, PowerShell. ISC here. We're gonna integrate VS VS uh, VS Code Insider here too soon uh, in future release. So that way we have everything work from from our PowerShell Studio. Um, all right. So before I start, uh, 
let me just give you a rundown on my environment here. I'm going to launch my X window application. Large. I know I can automate this, but this is the part I would like to show manually. Uh, next, 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 finish. Is will open a my ready to, but soon to be my Linux, my WSL desktop box. Then I'm going to open my Ubuntu desktop. And here's what I'm going to do is let me see, let me go up. I'm going to export display local host equals zero and complex. I have everything documented how to do this on, on in my in my blog post. And I'm going to leave this in the background. Wait to finish. This always stays on. That's that's you know I just it's does you see all these messages trying that it, it come to a point it's going to stop. I just can leave it here. You can see here I already have access to my to my desktop. And there's and I have a graphical Linux in my Windows 10. This is not a VM. Okay. Uh, I can do cat etc. This if I remember well. WSB dash Sometimes it's like this, so let's see. There we go. And I can do PWSH because I already have it installed in, in my Ubuntu uh, WSL. You can see I have version 610 preview 1, version table, and I have PowerShell installed. Okay. All right, so. In this first session here, and I may have to back trust here. Okay, let me see. I got a, I got a script here which I call Platform Test Two. In this one, of the first script that I built, I uh, said, "What can I come up with in Linux?" I mean, I started Linux two years ago. Since SQL Server came out, Linux in July two years ago, close to two years ago, and and then PowerShell came out in August. So uh, I needed a purpose to okay. I want to learn about Linux, and I want to I want to create a function that I can that I can use cross-platform. And basically here, uh, I create a function Debian app upgradable. Um, I don't know if you know Linux, but Linux have the ability to to do the following, right? Uh, I could do. Let me open another session here. This time I gotta do this because this. Is, Based on this is because I loaded Anaconda and it's still configured. So now I'm gonna uh, do sudo app and I'm gonna do update. The things that you do in in the beginning, I open the session and the first thing I do is an update and an upgrade. This will look in the repository, Ubuntu repository and update my WSL with um, if there's any packages to be installed and upgraded. Um, now this will create a list um, this will create a list that would tell me you have 10, 5, 3 um, packages to be updated. So, but the thing is you see that but you see the whole the whole uh, uh, wording uh, is not kind of clear, right? So I created a function that would allow me to, in this case, you're going to do sudo. You can do sudo with with PowerShell. Oh. Right? There you go. Okay, you can do sudo, which means that's running PowerShell in uh, as an admin uh, in in WSL or in Linux. And um, I could either let me see here. I thought I changed this. No, this is commented out. Okay, I uh, did that, and I could run the whole thing in here. This will be the link to run it. Uh, 
Let's see. Is, is it bomb? It bomb. I haven't run this in a long time. I, I did some changes to the path. We'll see. All right. You can see here, Linux is selected, creating list. Of course, as a warning. Uh, and basically, let's go back to the code here for a second. Basically, my code has a function. This is necessary for make it a standard, uh, standard um, I'll show commandlet type function. Uh, and you have an output string, output path, and this variable it's available in PowerShell core only and it will give you it will give you the ability to uh, let me put it this way get us Oh, and this okay. So it gives you the ability to check in which system you're in. And in this case, if it's Linux true, it's not a Mac, it's not Windows. So you can use that to create cross platform scripts. So that way you can trap and say, okay, if it's not uh if it's not a Windows uh a PowerShell core, then you can add whatever other you know, you can be very creative with it with those with those simple uh variables okay so now if I want to check on what I did there um, then I was able to create those files in my temp folder and we see if we can find them C drive temp and there it is. I created two files. And this is because I created in in uh, in Linux. Okay, so that's why you don't see any any um, uh, I recall that the line feed uh, carriage return line feed. This is all line feed, so it, that's the only part that uh, you need to add that that ability in there. Okay, and then here basically is all what is I think is better on my on my windows here. <laughs> all right, so this is the intention, okay? I'm able to clean the list and this is the upcoming updates that I that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I didn't wish I didn't do it in here. Uh, is only go for the uh, upgradable option. So now if I go back to my my Ubuntu here. Exit and I'm do sudo app update. You see it running. It's checking the repository for updates. Just give it a few. There you go. That's all it comes up. And here it is, 14 packages to be upgraded. And then I can do the uh, upgrade step. Yes. And that's upgrading my, my packages in WSL. So this is just a quick example uh, that you could, a little more than, than yeah, but it's just a quick example of how you could possibly document something from a, from from an update. Okay, it says fourteen. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing six. Maybe it's part of the, or there might be within there. There might be a few others. So you got to break it out a little bit better. But just to give you an example of something that you can do. Now, if you run this in, um, now if you try to run this in. Windows PowerShell, which is the part that you want to give it a shot at. I have my Windows PowerShell here. Enter. And it's going to tell me it's not recognized. Missed something there. Oh, you got to do this.
real close so we won't ignore those spaces. Fix it here. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Script doesn't match the current running version of Windows PowerShell. So this is just a, you know, just a, an example of creating a Linux script in PowerShell that cannot run in Windows PowerShell. Okay. That's perfect. And this is because I'm using the uh, inside the script file, I'm using the requires uh, parameter here, attribute, require version 6. That works. Okay. Now, in the other case, remember I showed you about um, doing a working with SMO SQL Server uh, .NET Core. And um, in this case, of course, I can do the following. I can go ahead and run uh, from my Let's open a Windows PowerShell here. Always open it admin. I have to specify the uh, the path to my DLLs first. Then I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna connect with my Linux SQL Server and run the rest of the run the rest of the script. And as you can see from my Windows PowerShell core, I can connect to my Ubuntu that I have running on my um, VMware. And uh, if anyone possibly imagine that uh, if you can install SQL Server in WSL, the answer is no, or at least not yet. I wish they could do that, but at least I could have every environment on my on my sing, single Ubuntu subsystem. So it's not available yet. And then, of course, I can run the same. I can run the same series of commandlets from uh, from my Ubuntu desktop. I'm still loading in here, and that's my session for my WSL. Here. Good thing is that you can do copy paste from between the uh, between the console. Matter of fact, let's do this. Uh, let's connect to my SQL Server from Linux to Windows. Okay, that's the DLLs were. Loaded, and now I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm connecting from Linux to Windows. Woo Look at that. What a beauty. So I'm using the same code I developed in my Windows desktop and, and use it cross platform, just copy pasting in, in this case. Okay? That is a beauty. Now, also, you could do is do uh, enter dash ps session now because this is PowerShell core is not computer name is host name and now I can do uh, Mars which is my Linux box and I'm gonna use username max C password I can do start PS version. Ah, of course. Yeah, there you go. And there, Ubuntu, if I want to verify where I'm at, slash, uh, etc., slash. And 
uh, you can see I'm in I'm not in my Ubuntu the Ubuntu in Linux here is is uh, six uh, what 16.04 and this is to show I'm connected to my VMware Ubuntu 17.10 Yes, you're available to inst you are allowed to install the will be able to install uh, PowerShell Core in either version of Ubuntu. Okay. All right. So now we talk about you have the ability to to uh, run PowerShell script uh, from your Windows uh, PowerShell Core script from your Windows PowerShell. And this is one thing that I blog about uh, in my just recently, and I'm going to show you also the Windows form that I'm that I use. Uh, this is basically straightforward. You create script block first, and then you uh, make sure you point to the path where your uh, PowerShell core executable is. Uh, you create some argument because you have the uh, the argument so uh, for the executable. This is what you do here. I'm going to put this a little bigger. Okay. And then this is the true magic here. Start process. Start process is what will run in the background that uh, that uh, script block that, 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 that you build. Okay. Uh, it had to become a little more modular in, in this sense, but you're passing the executable path and the arguments pass through to the to the variables of that way it knows that the, the content um, and then I use this a lot I, I, I import CLI XML is very practical uh, let's say you're working in a project that you want to save the um, the content of your variable and carry it away to keep working on it uh, the most important thing about the, the um, creating an XML uh, from that .NET object, uh, from PowerShell .NET object, is that it serializes and grabs only the properties. It, it drops all the methods, so it grabs all the properties. So you have the values of, of the, the contents of what you want to work with. So I'm using that to create an XML file, and then I pass that on to the object. This just to display the uh, just to display the result. But then I'm, I'm export. Inside the inside the um, the script block, I do the export first, and put it on my on my you know in whatever output folder, and then I do the import to get it, and this is the partial core result, and then I can display this in my window session, uh, and it's just if I run this the whole thing. Open a window session here. Let's do here. Uh, what did I do here? XML. Da, 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 da. Oh, 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 oh. Did I run it too much? Let me see. Oh, sorry. Uh, fix, fix. Oh, one. I should take care of it. Make sure I have the right code selected. Uh, XML code did not find. Okay, I have I have a app when you do changes at the last minute. Uh, temp, temp, temp. Come on, man, I read this before. Nothing like having, okay, so I got this. And I got this. Of course, I'm to release. Come on, be good with me now. Here we go. I did some last minute changes on, on the file name. Okay, so this is just a quick, just basic example of running something uh, on from the PowerShell core uh, in the background, getting the result back out in an XML, 
and reading it and in Windows PowerShell to provide the result. Okay. Now implementing this in a Windows form, and that's uh, let me close this up. Uh, save yes. Close this up. Yes. Okay. So now we have a solution here that I created. Okay. It's very basic. This is a PowerShell uh, Windows GUI that I created in PowerShell Studio. Uh, basically, I'm going to uh, provide a parameter there, a command. Uh, but the trick is, because you don't know what's coming out, you got to provide the properties you want to retrieve from that XML. Okay, So that's what the, the two boxes. Uh, this is just an example. Okay, uh, So if I run this, Right, so I run this, you can see here I got uh, already a command in place because I want to start with this one. Uh, of course, that's the comments that I that I that I set up first. Uh, to understand a little bit more about the window here is this is a project. It was a Windows uh, wizard from the wizard. Uh, it provides a global. It does provide a global uh, script file. Everything that you put in here. It will be globally available for your solution, okay? And then, of course, you have your uh, our startup side that uh, you want to include something. This is more. I never touch this one really. Uh, I'm normally concentrated in doing the, the global. And then in the form in the script, then is where you code what you want to uh, do behind the events that is uh, included in the form, okay? I'll, I'll 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 go a little bit more deeper on this. I want to show you first the. Uh, a result. So this will gonna go and get me the uh, PS version table. Which there is a bug in PS um, PowerShell course already identified. If you make sure you read uh, uh, the information uh, for the release, because they're gonna tell you what is working, what is still working on. Uh, I just got around the their issue doing it this way because I wanted to show. Okay, I'm pulling this out of PowerShell core. And the only way to do it is if I run this, do this this way. Uh, Cleaner process, it will delete the file in the beginning. It did that. Here is the message that I that I posted. Uh, I'm going to click run. It says processing before, and now it displayed information. Okay. Now I can also do, if I do this, get dash. Unique. Uh, I'm running run this one. This one will run quick. And do name. And of course, because I'm reading back from the XML, I gotta put the same property. And I'm gonna run this. Because they're gonna be duplicates. I mean, it's gonna be duplicates in name. So by doing it, uh, here I provide the uh, the full uh, the full job here, which is gonna be save as and everything. So you can have build a status. And then the output result at, at the bottom. Okay. Uh, also, one good nice feature that this uh, form. Um, I'm going to provide this form as a wizard in the near future, uh, just to start up. You know, um, if I do get dash process and I do name. Uh, uh, which one is the status? I think it is. Name a little redundant, but it, it, it the thing is to show the functionality of it. And I do run this one. Oh, okay, so okay, so that means it's not what I wanted. Uh, it's ID then. I want to show you because the timer is, is, is very a cool feature. Doesn't matter. We'll take it. ID and I do run. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I have a very fast uh, PowerShell today. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, the timer, you know, is, is a process that takes long. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm sorry. I, I got I got to show this. It's just like okay. This is what I want to show. ID. 
enter. And now the timer will run. And when it, it, fin it finishes in about a minute. But as, as you can see, uh, uh, I'm going to provide this wizard in, in the near future. Hopefully, I think I'm going to try to put it out by, by summer. And um, I'm very excited about this one because then, then you can be creative. And, and there's no reason not to use PowerShell Core. Um, try to use it now. Understand the SSH concept of remoting between Linux and Windows or Macintoshes. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and just, just start growing from that. Now, while this finish running, uh, let's look at the code in here. So first I have the... Uh, the event that loads the form, right? And here I'd set up some some text parameters in here, um, but this could be also down here, I think. Yeah, uh, refresh it will text command. This is what display the command line first, and then on the second text box below is when to display the uh, name and value. This is the uh, uh, the default values I want to show when the forms open. Uh, and then, of course, here's the if statement, which will check if the file already exists. So we'll delete it. It will display the status of it. Uh, and then, of course, this is where I add the caution note about this is just for test purpose. Uh, in the button event, notice that it is a button run process. Uh, in PowerShell Studio, when you build forms, you get, um, I can show it here. You got some areas here like control set. I don't know if you can see it here. I'm sorry, I cannot do this bigger than that. Uh, control set. And when you click there, you have different type of buttons that you can use. In order to use the, um, um, in this scenario, the, uh, the background process, then that's why I use the uh, button run process option. Okay. You have a start job, single click. Uh, you have a a lot of stuff that you can play with in here um, and basically in it then is what I do the, uh, the manipulation of of the stream what's already there is get processed and then after the first time we process this is what it is for uh, the next time around it clears all the fields so you can add more commands if you need to now this is what caused the magic here this is a function provided by sapiens for you to work with uh, you can create your own, but Sapiens already provides uh, snippets uh, within the wizard that you just, you have to study it a little bit and you can tweak it and make it your own. And that's what I did, especially with the, uh, um, this piece here, which is not included in, in their code. It's going to be included soon. A developer like this, this idea. Uh, so that way we have the OK button to run and the timer at, at the bottom to, so you know that it's processing. Okay. So it's very, very simple here. Uh, it does the test, look look for the XML that it was exported, and then if it's there, then it, it does this magic uh, based on, on the logic that you provide. Okay. Um, then uh, one of the interesting features that we talk about in, in PowerShell Studio was the fact that I can go ahead and do a file group, for example. In here, I have a Azure Global Camp 2018, which I'm going to be doing an Azure uh, PowerShell Core Lab, uh, and I have all my all my Azure scripts that are going to uh, be doing in the lab. I just click to that file group, and everything gets loaded at that at that time. Okay, that's that's one of the good features of of, of PowerShell. Also, uh, you got the ability. Of course, in this case, I will have to. To close the whole thing, I, I cannot close the file group by, by itself. So I just got to exit from here and open again. The other feature is using uh, the collection uh, project. And a collection project allow you to um, identify a group of files that you want to do. In this case, this is my CodeCamp uh, demo scripts and that I can uh, add to it and then I can open individually if, if I want to. Okay, always remember the ones that, that, that it was open, okay? Um, that's, a, that's a very nice feature. Uh, the browser, object browser, this is where it lists all, all, of, all, of your, um, all of your modules loaded in your system, okay? This is what's loaded in your system. And you can manage that 
there's a platform uh, area in here and there is a edit cache button you can click you open a PowerShell cache editor and here you can add remove I mean you can check and uncheck the ones you're working with so make it more narrowed down to the things you're working with okay uh, that I, I love this feature very 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 much uh, so um, and where is my yeah that other one went away okay so any question nope we're good well you gotta give me something <laughs> And it give me something, man. This is a, basically this is this is the whole environment, how it's set up and everything. I can show you one more thing. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show in here. Is the ability? Where is it? Where are you? Here it is. Let's open this one. This is Python. So let's open this one. But this is a Python code. Yeah, open it in uh, PowerShell Studio. It's not meant to run in PowerShell Studio. But if I do this, I love this feature. Now, on the newer release, on the console, on the console, on the option console tab, you can add you can add shells. Shells not really limited to PowerShell. Okay, so in this case I have. Uh, I have the console to Python. Okay, so I added Python in there. So one thing that I can do is here, I can click Python. Python is loaded. I cannot run. I cannot run the whole thing from. As you see here, I don't have it able to run. But I could do this: copy, paste. And I should have somewhere in here. Where are you? If this, oh, got an attribute in there. Okay, wait a minute. Where am I in here? C46. ODBC. Oh, 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 really? Oh, you install the other? Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, in my code, because I had to reinstall, uh, I had to reinstall SQL Server in my Linux. Is that what happened? What's the other one? It is this one. I think it's 13. Let's try it again. Here I can do a reset. It's a different version. Okay, so this is it loads. Huh, okay. This is weird. I should be able to run it in here. Apparently, it doesn't want to do that. Okay, so let me try this. Copy, and let's try to open. Run. Ah, TK. TK not installed. Interesting. Yeah, it's telling me that my. Oh, 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 what happened here? No. What is this? Oh, that's. Oh, this is supposed to run. I don't know why it's not running in here, but. Yeah. 
been having some updates issue apparently after my last insider update uh, but now let's check this out because this was running in here and it checks out on the, my Python here no oops that's not what I want I need to do you see magic here at work when you install anaconda it gives you the option to install the path of um, for for the anaconda so that way when you start your your linux subsystem it start with python 3.6 i got to drop down to the default python in order to do updates and upgrade because it will give you problems if you don't do that so that means i have to edit my bash RC. I want to do Vim. You see the whole scenario here. Ooh. I'm going to log in. Okay, so you can see in here, go to insert, and I go. Delete, escape, right and quit. And I'm going to do exit because I want to start my session with Anaconda 3.6. Python, I got Anaconda loaded. And now we'll see if I have any more issue with it. We did update the OS in here. So we'll see. Paste. my line feed or something there's a way this was working before come on there you go so okay so it's my line feed it is my line feed okay so uh, that means in here I got here I got a feature here you see this down here oh my I have line feed I gotta make sure I check can I return they always uh, uh, you got to do a DOS to Linux file conversion when you move things around I left this file as a line feed so I'm gonna go save it close it open it again just to test that this is what happened copy Reset the shell and I'm gonna do right click paste. Now I still have a problem there. I do have a problem in there. No, no, why? But the goal was to open the same type window in the. You know what? Hold on a second. No, this is, I need the function, this one. Okay. I need a function. Okay, let me run this product here. Copy. Okay, uh, now I'm going to run this again in here, Python, it is, sorry for that, there we go, now I'm going to run the Copy. 
And this is what I'm going to try here. It's an example of I build my own uh, little grid view and in, uh, in, uh, in Windows and with the same code that I loaded here, which I can do this, right click, copy, uh, ping it to run it in here. Okay, so this is more in here. My bar is up. Okay. B W S H. Ah, script file. B W line thirteen. Okay, so apparently I do have some. Because I use Windows, I don't want to use Windows. I want to use the this one. Make sure I have the right path, right? If not, it's not going to work. And there it is. So, I've, so that way you can create, you know, PowerShell functions with Python uh, uh, integrated. And it works in both Windows and in um, uh, Linux. Sorry for the move around a little bit, but thing happens. All right, so that ends my presentation on. What's cooking with PowerShell core? They're deciding if they have any questions for you or not. <laughs>